Hello, everybody. I'm Kathy Cohan, Executive Director of Film Pittsburgh. I'd like to welcome you to the Q&A for the Real Abilities Block 2 Shorts program. I'm excited to talk to the filmmakers today. And if you guys wouldn't mind going around and introduce yourselves, I'd really appreciate it. Let's start with you, Jimmy. Hello, I'm Jimmy Olson. I'm a writer-director of a short film called Alive. And give us a log line. Mm, it's about uh, a woman in a wheelchair and her assistant. And uh, the woman in a wheelchair, she yearns after intimacy and love. Thank you. What about you, Mads? Hi, I'm Mads. And I'm from Norway. And I am the co-director and co-producer of I Am Dyslexic. So the other, other one is uh, Katie Wyman. Um, the, the film is about this young boy climbing a mountain that represents how it feels to have a learning difference like dyslexia in today's society. Thank you. Uh, Michele? Hi, I'm Michele Bertini. I come from Roma, Italy. And uh, my story, is, uh, my chart, it's about two young people, love, and uh, in a wonderful island populated only by deaf people. Thank you. Mike? Yeah, my name is Mike Addy, and I'm the director of Moment to Moment, which was the short film about Carl and Susan, who are the couple who are working to redefine their relationship amidst uh, Carl's Alzheimer's diagnosis. So Mike, let's, let's uh, dig in here with you. How did the film come to be and how did you meet them? They were such a lovely, really lovely couple. Yeah, so I am, um, it, it turned out I basically had a mutual friend with them. It wasn't anything that complicated, but uh, I had a mutual friend with them who just, she just had this inkling that they could be the subject of a film. It was not much more than that and invited me to come out to their house and meet them. And um, and so I went out there and, and, and at the time, uh, it's interesting, Carl had actually already been, Carl and Susan had already been a subject of a radio program called This American Life. That was about <laughs> a different um, stage of his Alzheimer's diagnosis. It was actually about, uh, the story is about his sort of interest in trying to understand his own diagnosis using his, his sensibilities as a scientist. And I remember going there and thinking, oh, this could be an interesting way to create like a visual representation of this story. And I just started hanging out with them. But more than anything, I just discovered that they were a really lovely, sweet couple. And I loved the, 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 just being around them. And I found it a very pleasant environment. But also there was something really interesting happening in that Carl, as a person who was always very inquisitive and interested, was you know, now in his, in the, in the further stage of his dementia diagnosis was really like doing all these like interesting tactile projects. You know, the, the main thing, the main thrust that was interesting for me in the film was the extraction of the copper that became what was really interesting to me because it was so visual. So in the process of filming, I would just kind of go over there for an hour or two at a time and film Carl kind of like ripping the copper out of various electronics and Susan sort of being like somewhat befuddled by it, but encouraging at the same time. And then uh, it was kind of moving along and I, and I thought the film would be this sort of more metaphorical thing where you would just see the copper and that would become a representation of his experience and diagnosis. But then Susan at one point really decided that this was art, that the copper could become art. And that changed the, the whole sort of uh, thrust of the film because then it had like a real, ending, you know, suddenly this discovery created a moment for them to to come together and create something and take it out into the public. And it sort of, it, it was like a gift as a filmmaker, you know, when you have something like that fall into your lap, it's really wonderful because in documentary you often don't know when to stop. And suddenly I had this very clear ending in mind. So it, it worked out quite well and um, Great, thank you. Um, Michele, I don't know if you're with us or if you can talk a little bit, but you know, now that I'm thinking about this block of films, you know, Moment to Moment was about a older couple and their uh, love story, um, not, you know, part is part of the film, so, sort of. And Deaf Love 
uh, is also a romance. And then when we get to Alive, Jimmy, your film is also about somebody who wants to have a, be in a romance. So it's kind of interesting that uh, we have these different um, sides of the story. But Michele, if you could talk to us about um, the deaf love and how it came to be, that'd be great. Okay, yes. Uh, my short, deaf love, uh, it's trying to continue the process of integration above from not hearing people and hearing people. And uh, we try to do this, uh, try to do this simple story, uh, trying to change um, the media, to... Merge two different words between the deaf people and the people that hears. And so he, he thought about this island in which only deaf people lived. And then there was one guy that went there was from a, a different world in a way, that was the world of hearing people. So the funny thing is that the guy comes there and he has a guitar, and so he wants to think, sing, and let's play for these people because he doesn't know that he's going to. Uh, how did you How did you come up with this idea? How did you come up with the idea to tell this story? Well, I am uh, very fascinated mm -hmm. about the the world of the not even people because uh, it's uh, a world uh, very visual very um, uh, complex very complex very uh, very cinematic i i think that uh, uh, a, a word uh, that uh, you have to interpret it and um, you have to uh, a word made of the body movements, uh, and uh, so I. Da tanto tempo sono in pista con questo mondo. So it's really into this world because it's, it's, it's so poetic for the fact that you, you have uh, the words to express the things. So you have like movements, and as you see from the translator here, so there's a lot of like poetic and, uh, and okay. things happening. I mean, and then we have tried to to find a different way to to tell the story, uh, not rhetoric, uh, uh, changing the point of view. Thank you so much because language, as you know, it's um it's challenging. Um, you know, we have uh, Film Pittsburgh's official interpreter here, Joan Stone, interpreting this. So folks that are deaf can uh, understand this Q&A. And your Italian was so beautiful to listen to just now, but I couldn't understand a word that you were saying. So thank you to Christine uh, for being here to help us uh, understand. Um, Jimmy, let's move to you. And um, your story is also about somebody seeking uh, love and intimacy. Um, tell us a little bit about how that film came to be, because I think that um, you know, it's a very important conversation in the disabilities community. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, from from the get go, I I listened to this podcast uh, last year, and I heard a part of, part of the story was a bit bit similar to my story. So I, it was about this uh, disabled guy, I think, and he wanted to have an escort, and. So yeah, I thought that was very interesting and, and very interesting for us how how we as abled able bodied people, how we perhaps how we see disabled people. It's like if we see them um having issues talking or moving, uh, our prejudice against them could be that we think they think like they look. Um and of course, that's that's not true. But I, I, I'm guessing that a lot of people have that prejudice, and it's uh, I found that interesting and and well, almost therapeutic, you know, for me as a filmmaker to just get rid of that prejudice to making this film. And um, and yeah, you know, everyone everyone wants the same thing. So and but sometimes it feels like we are forgetting uh, a big part of the society and and um and that's why it's important i think 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for making that film. And, um, you know, part of what we do here at Film Pittsburgh is uh, we're showing 137 short films and 30 feature films during the run of the festival. And the idea is, is that um, even in this, you know, COVID quarantine that we're living through, um, you might watch a film at the festival and a friend uh, from their home might watch the uh, a film and you might talk about it. Um, and that's our hope. And um, obviously when we're able to gather in person and we can talk about these things, um, I, I just think something like the sexuality or the desire for um, having intimacy with another person is a, it's a very important topic in the disability community because um, you know it's not talked about. It's almost like, taboo or something. So thank you for making your film. And um, uh, I, I guess maybe I do have one more question about it. Uh, were any of the the actors, um, did any of the actors have a disability? No. Um, well, I, I, you know, obviously I've had this question uh, uh, before. Uh, the thing is with this character, she's, she's not, she's not, she's not born disabled. She's, she, she went through this, um, um uh, accident and um and she has this certain type of brain damage um but from from the beginning i was looking at and contacting a few we don't have you know very much or a lot of you know professional actors who are disabled in sweden or in stockholm so i found this woman and and um she she did a research so she um she does it with uh, a lot of uh, respect. Oh yeah, no, and that's why I'm asking because I really didn't know, and she did a yeah. great job. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think it, again, it's um, you know, uh, on being on the other end and trying to create, you want to make as good a film as possible, but also mm -hmm. you know, knowing that if there's um, uh, actors who are disabled that are right for the role and can play them, yeah. you know, I think that it's really important that all filmmakers consider it, and I. You know, I'm sure that many of you do. Mads, let's talk about your film. Uh, it was so, um, so wonderful and, uh, um, you know, just whimsical in, in ways and really unique and creative. So uh, how did how did it come to be? Well, first of all, it's actually my bachelor film. Oh, wow. Um, it's... Um, I am dyslexic myself, so it was very important for me to express how I felt because that's not talked about. Mm -hmm. So I proposed that, you know, I want to make this film about how I feel. So, you know, someone, a little child or whoever can go and say, hey, this is how I feel and show it to someone who doesn't understand. And um, it has been successful so far. But, but we, um, it's, it's based on my own experiences but we ended up with over 60 other students wanting to work on this film because they all oh, wow. had dyslexia, they had dyscalculia, ADHD, uh, and uh, Asperger's and so on. So we, not, we, we made a film, but we also made a safe environment to speak about all these things that we found difficult. And we really help each other build, build, build each other up. So That's it's really fantastic. beautiful. And, uh, yeah, it's so we all put this energy into the film, and it, I think it really shows. So, yeah. And getting what are you working on? What are you working on now, Mads? Are you do you have a new any new film projects that you're working on now? Yes, uh, well, not necessarily a film currently, but I just finished a film, which is also in this festival. Um, but currently, I'm uh, illustrating a book uh, oh. about dyslexia as well. All my work is within. Neuro, neurodiversity um it's actually um yeah it's about this boy learning that he has dyslexia and he's going to write an essay and the challenges that he faces with that it's called hacking the code and it's actually with an american woman called uh, gay or something um it's going to be awesome i'm soon finished with that book so great thank you anybody else want to share with our audience what you're working on now I'm I'm trying to develop a, a, a series from this short. Oh, fantastic! Um, but, but but yeah, I'm not sure yet if I have the material for it. But uh, but I'm 
I'm working on two features and a TV series at the same time. So it, it, I, 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 I'm not top prioritizing this series now. But but some people have asked me if I, if there's something you know uh, developing from this. But I'm, I'm I'm curious, but I'm not sure yet. Gotcha. I guess that's how it, it goes um, in the filmmaking business. I want to thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. It was awesome to hear from you and to learn a little bit about your films. Um, thank you for allowing Film Pittsburgh to share it with our audience and um, stay safe out there. Thanks, big thanks to Joan Stone. And um, we will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Bye-bye.